I'm a sexual predator. I used to be a teacher. I molested several girls. I touched their private parts. I ruined their lives. And I'm gonna live with that for the rest of my life. When I was 19 years old, I've been accused of inappropriately touching my niece. The pressure was put on me saying, if I go to trial, I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna get a life sentence, I'll never see the light of day again. And out of fear, you know, I signed an eight year deal. When I got out of prison, I was 26 years old. In Florida, convicted sex offenders who committed a crime against a child are prohibited from living within a thousand feet of schools, parks, and daycares. But in Miami-Dade County, offenders must live at least 2,500 feet from a school, one of the most restrictive policies in the country. This leaves tiny blocks of land where sex offenders can live. The few open spaces are industrial zones or the Everglades. And now, nearly 500 homeless sex offenders are sleeping on the street. They have to live like nomads, and no one's gonna hire you if you're living out there without being able to shower and have some kind of orderly lifestyle. The 2,500-foot ordinance really hurts these people. If you're asking me whether or not I think predators and offenders and pedophiles should live inside our communities where, you know, kids are, um, I would certainly discourage that. Lauren Book was an 11 year old child when her nanny began sexually abusing her, abuse that went on for years. Her father is Ron Book, one of the most powerful and well-connected lobbyists in the state. They committed a crime that our society has said, we're gonna treat you different for the rest of your lives. And that's just the way it is. Ron Book is the chair of the Homeless Trust in Miami-Dade County and he is also the individual who has lobbied for stronger restrictions against sex offenders, restrictions which has increased homelessness. I, I don't have any intention of addressing the 2,500 foot rule, but I believe that it makes communities safer because it pushes them further away from children where they can look and scout out their victim. It's crazy the way they have our curfew from 10 to 6 because, you know, from 10 to 6, most kids are asleep. And our hours to be out, that's when the kids are out and about. You're asking me about the logic of the ordinance and, and the fact that during the day when kids are most vulnerable, the restriction is not there. And at night when kids are probably safer, the restrictions are there. I will punt and tell you that I'm not a policymaker. You know, I enforce the ordinances that are in the books. They can't live with their friends or family, so each night they go out to the street corner, set up a tent, sleep in their car, um, and sleep outside, uh, exposed to the elements. I curfew from 6 in the morning. I leave at 6 in the morning and come in at 10 o'clock at night. After I leave the spot, I go to my niece's house I sit there and watch TV all day on the news and see what's happening in the world. My hands shake because I have Parkinson. It's hard to put up a tent with Parkinson. Yes, it is. Because I shake too much and you can't really hold a stick or whatever part that holds the tent up. So I have money and I still can't find a place to stay because they have 2,500 feet law. I look for an apartment every week. The issue is not just housing, it's restoration. If you make it so difficult for them to be able to have housing, how are they ever going to be restored? After the first ordinance was passed in 2005, large encampments of homeless sex offenders began to form, first under bridges. And by early 2018, hundreds were living in an industrial zone. Miami-Dade County has been trying to dismantle this homeless encampment for several months now. Makeshift encampment near Hialeah. Get out of the industrial area by Thursday or face arrest. Our most recent large encampment, people were sleeping outside in a warehouse district next to a railroad track um, with no running water, no bathrooms. It was a health hazard. It wasn't fair to the men who lived there 
it was not fair to the business owners, the encampment had to go. Most of them have relocated to new encampments, but once again, they remain on a street corner, they have no water, they have no bathrooms. Jeff Hearn is working with the ACLU to sue the county. He says that the law is unconstitutional because it amounts to extra punishment. The county argues that the law isn't punishment, it's a regulation, and that if sex offenders have suffered, it's because of their own conduct. Fair housing rules tell you you don't have to rent to somebody convicted of sexually deviant behaviors. It's not the residency restriction that caused that person a problem. That person's problem was caused by their criminal act. Every time a sex offender moves, they must register their new address with the police. For some, that address is just a street corner within the approved areas. What was the age of the victim in the case? All right, so you would have living restrictions. So you want me to check the address now? Yeah, please. What address are we going to? What address? I'm not there physically, so I have to go based on what this shows me. But I don't know if this is a school here, and this is part of the property where the children use for the school. This is a very tough group of individuals to place for a variety of reasons. The component that is obvious is folks will say, not in my neighborhood. It's protection for kids, you know. It's totally understandable, but the way that they keep, keep kicking us away from street corners makes living almost impossible. In January 2018, the county, lobbied by Ron Book, enacted yet another ordinance. This one was meant to prevent sex offenders from forming any more encampments. The county has enacted an ordinance that prohibits camping just any and everywhere. Police could now arrest sex offenders on site for camping on county property. When we get settled in one spot, you know, the law enforcement, they come and they force us to go to a different area or to go find a new address. Whenever the police just come over and say, you can't be here, well, this is where they put us. And they said, well, you got to just take a walk, just keep walking. So where do we go? It's hard for offenders to find a place that complies with the law. And once they do, they risk arrest at every turn. If they're not at their registered address, they could go to jail. But if their address is on county property, they're violating the camping ordinance, another jailable offense. And for those on probation, if the police tell them to leave and they comply, their ankle bracelet will go off and they could return to prison. We'd be happy as a police department to be an actor and a part of a collaboration for solutions. In the meantime, we're the player that is charged by statute to take enforcement action. To be trapped in the middle of a governmental social problem is complicated. Since their curfew is typically 10 p.m., we'll come out after that and make contact with as many that are there at that time. Uh, so right now, there's not really many out here now. Uh, the cars will start showing up at a later time. Uh, that guy was putting up a tent. So, uh, Roger, what's the next PTH uh, for the verification? You want to do it Yeah. Uh, it's 23621, right here. Well, people have to live somewhere. We can't banish individuals from the entire county, the entire state, the entire nation. You're not talking about Boy Scouts, and you're not talking about a group that's benign, and, and you can put them in your community without fear. So the problem is a two-sided problem. They're human, they need a place to live, but some of them may still be dangerous. The county commission has the power to change the policy. But in this political climate, that's unlikely. The courts could also change the law. Around the country, courts have struck down similar measures. But so far in Miami, they've refused to do so. So the question remains, where do they go? You're rehabilitated and you get back to society, but society won't let a sex offender go back to it. They've committed a lot of hideous crimes. I think that everyone that commits a crime needs to pay for their crime. I think that's right. But when does that finish? 